This is Todd Ponsky from the Journal of Pediatric Surgery, and today we are in the Netherlands at the Dutch Annual Surgical Society meeting. We had a great opportunity while here to get a review, a two-minute review, on an article that was just published in the Journal of Pediatric Surgery on a very controversial topic about the posterior tracheopexy. We recently did a, uh, a review on posterior tracheopexy from uh, Dr. Jennings' group, and now there's a new twist to this. Uh, the, using thoracoscopy and doing a posterior tracheopexy uh, routinely when doing an esophageal atresia repair. With us today, we have Dr. Stefan Dethuk, and he, you can also pronounce this in English, Tikkat. And he is going to be presenting a paper that they just published uh, out of Utrecht. Uh, esophageal atresia is a forget anomaly, so usually the trachea is also affected. Now at the bronchoscopy you can assess the side of the TE fistula and also you can uh, assess whether it's more anterior problem or a posterior problem. Um, if there is more than two-thirds lumen occlusion, especially on the posterior side, then you should consider doing it. Now in this paper we described four patients we operated last year. They all had moderate to severe tracheal malacia at bronchoscopy especially the posterior membranous intrusion of the lumen. And those patients were operated during isotoracoscopic uh, subgeotresia uh, surgery. We made apexia of the posterior wall towards the spinal ligament. And then we anastomosed both ends. This is done with non-absorbable suture. Right? So all patients recovered well and none of them had any respiratory symptoms uh, after surgery. This technique only takes six minutes per suture and two or three sutures are placed. So during the thoracoscopic procedure, it doesn't take much extra time to perform it. Okay, I just want to make sure I got the summary right. What's being described here is that because it is so prominent in patients with esophageal atresia, instead of having to go back a second time for those patients, you guys do it proactively every time you're going to do an esophageal atresia repair. I think this is, in my opinion, this is going to be a very hot topic. This, yeah, whether it's right or wrong, I don't have the answer to that, but it's certainly an important topic to be addressing, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to interview you. Thanks for inviting us here, and uh, thanks for doing the review. Thanks for the opportunity.